Hello everyone and welcome to this extra special session um, designed for the older yoga student, new starter. This is um, addressing some of the issues that I've been um, contacted about and uh, I'm going to give you a, a few tips for use for these um, conditions and um, hopefully it will give a nice blended session as well so that anybody can participate and benefit. Um, I just want to quickly explain that um, when we're asked as Iyengar yoga teachers to prescribe uh, certain um, sequences for things like lower backs or knee problems or whatever the problem is, um, although we can give a general guidance, it's really best if you can get yourself along to a teacher and have some proper individual help. Much like if you go to your physio, they might be able to give you the generic exercises to do, but within that they will look at your individual circumstances because you might be someone with a back problem that's also got a knee problem or you might have a knee problem but also have a heart condition. So those things will um, affect the way that um, we work with these particular poses. Having said that, all of the poses I'm gonna give you today are safe and um, generally beneficial for everybody to do. Um, but I'm looking at four particular areas. Now I've been contacted a lot about the knee. It's a very complex issue, the, the knee, because it depends on what the particular problem is with the knee. So we'll be looking at that. I've also been asked to uh, address lower backs, which I'm going to do a live session on on Monday, uh, the 27th of March, I think it is. Um, and also um, uh, prolapse, that's another um, problem that occurs um, in older age or any age actually. And then the final one is um, hips. So quite a lot of uh, complex issues there. Um, now I just want to also tell you that Iyengar Yoga is named after BKS Iyengar. And he was trained anatomically. He was trained um, under the tutelage of a medical doctor. So his background is very anatomical. He started teaching at a very young age of 18. He was a, um, um, a, a, a kind of genius of his time. Um, but he soon discovered that a lot of his students couldn't do certain poses and he developed ways to help them over the years and eventually setting up his own institute in Pune in India he ran medical classes daily and um, they still run now um, he passed in 2014 but those medical classes still run uh, on a daily basis and as our younger trained uh, teachers, those of us that hold um, the certification to teach Iyengar, we have to train for about six years um, before we can get our basic certificate. So um, all our training is very much centered towards the, the students that we're going to be teaching and the responsibilities we have. So I just wanted to give you that little bit of a background, um, but if you want more information on um, Iyengar Yoga, BKS Iyengar, there's plenty of information on Google or other search engines are available, but please do contact me if you want any other information. So let's start with a simple pose um, for the knees. So um, when we're working on the knees, um, often the, the main problem uh, <clears throat> is lack of mobility or other problems can be hypermobility, of course, hyper hyper extension. I'm going to look at the alignment of the feet to start with in this very simple pose, and that's because a lot of the knee issues can be alleviated, helped, improved by working on your posture. And actually, you'll see that as a theme running through this session. So um, we'll be taking the feet about hip width apart, the feet parallel, the inner edges of the feet parallel. And if you're not sure whether you're, the inner edges of your feet are parallel or not, and you've got something like a, um, uh, a block or a piece of wood that has straight sides, all you do is you put your feet either side of that block and try and touch it with the, the inside heel and the big toe mound. Obviously some people have the bunion joints, but joint, put the, the, the joint of the toe here right up against the block and the inner heel against the block. And that way you'll know that your feet are straight. And <clears throat> what we're doing here is we're pressing down the big toe mount and we're spreading to the little toe mount. So we're stretching from the big toe to the little toe and then extending the heels back, pressing the heels down. So imagine you've got a tripod on the bottom of your feet 
Let me see if I can show you that here. So the center of the heel bone, the big toe mound, which is quite far back, it's not the, the toe itself, and the little toe mound. And that tripod, you're trying to press down evenly on both feet. And you might notice that on one leg you've got more weight or one part of the foot you've got more weight. Try and press those three points down evenly. Now I'm addressing everybody here. So I have to point out that anything where you can't stand for long periods of time, you can, you can stand with a chair in front of your feet like that. Or, let me just move this back a little bit. You can sit and do the same action. As long as you've got something um, to press the feet into. Okay, so the feet are pressing down into the floor. All right, so you can do this sitting down as well. Um, so, yes, you'd spend, you know, a few minutes just working on trying to feel the weight between the two feet. And then noticing that when you press those three points down, it has an effect on the alignment of your kneecap. So what we, what we talk about in, in um, Iyengar yoga, and it's a very anatomical focus, anatomically focused practice, which is why it's so uh, aligned with the other therapies like physiotherapy, for example. Some physiotherapists actually recommend Iyengar yoga because of its attention to detail of the alignment of the body. So you've got your inner knee ligament here, you've got your outer knee ligaments, you've got the bottom of the kneecap, the top of the kneecap, then you've got the back of the knee. So think of your knees as being quite square. So they've got four sides and they've got a back and a front. So when you press those three points down on your feet, you might feel, I'm not saying you will, but you might feel that there's a little contraction around the whole sort of circumference of the the knee itself, the kneecap and uh, knee joint itself, and that the back of the knee starts to stretch more. Because when the feet are pressing down, they are helping the lower leg muscles to uh, work efficiently, to align properly, and then the knees will align properly. And you can even feel this all the way up into the pelvic region, even up into the, um, the spine itself and the chest. Whereas when you just stand on your feet and you let your knees roll in, and you roll the weight onto the big toe joint and the ankles drop, then the whole of the inner body drops. All right, so paying attention to those three points in your feet, big toe to little toe, heel down, will affect your knees, your posture, your overall posture over the whole body, but particularly uh, the knee joint itself, it helps to strengthen it. Okay, so that's one thing you can do. Again, you can do that seated as well. Now, I'm aware that some people, they can't straighten the knee and they can't bend the knee because their knee is fixed. Now, obviously that you have limitations there as to what you can do. And there may be some um, discomfort when you try to stretch the legs, when you try to um, stretch those ligaments, um, or when you try to bend the leg. What you don't wanna feel is knee pain in the joint itself. That's, that's a no-no, okay? That means that the, the, the joint is under pressure or the ligaments are at their limit. If there's a stretch sensation in the back of the knee, it's generally an okay feeling, as long as it's not a hot burning sensation where you feel like the leg's going to snap. Don't push through that at all. But sometimes there will be this, this feeling of intensity in the back of the knee, maybe the hamstring, maybe the calf muscle as well. And all of those are relatively safe um, um, uh, sensations to experience and um, the way to know is that when you stop doing the pose when you stop doing the exercise usually the the sensation will go away after a few minutes if it lingers then you've pushed too far just rest and then come back to it another time but as I say everything that we do in Iyengar yoga is anatomically based it follows the body's natural pathways so as long as you're not forcing yourself but you are um, following those anatomical guidelines, you will be safe in your practice. Okay, so the second one I want to show you, now this is a bit more challenging for those that can't stand, those that need balance, but I'll show you the, the, the modifications you can do. So we want to try and stretch the, the back of that leg um, to get the, the back of the knee to open, to nourish the, 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 the ligaments, to bring circulation into the joint and to help um, stimulate stimulate um, healing. 
So one of the things you can do is you can raise your leg to a chair. Now, obviously there's different heights for different people, different abilities for different people. So we're going to take the leg up onto the chair like this and I've got a belt around the foot. Sorry, my chair's very, very creaky. Um, so the belt goes around the foot because we want some resistance. And what I'm doing here is I'm putting the belt around the roots of the toes and I'm pulling the belt so that the back of the knee gets a big stretch open. It goes down into the calf, into the heel, and I can feel the front shin bone contracting. So the front of the leg is contracting, the back of the leg is extending. And you can take the leg you know, higher, you can take the leg onto the wall if you like. Those that have balance issues but can still stand you can do this with your back to the wall so that you're not having to balance on one leg. You can lean back into the wall as long as the standing leg isn't too far away. And then you can take your leg up like so and press the shoulders back. And those that have to sit in a chair, and it's better to sit on something f firm, <laughs> um, you can stretch your legs out. You can have one leg bent, like that, you can stretch another leg out, and then it, you could put maybe, um, you know, a couple of books on the floor, or, a, or a, a low stool, and you can put the belt again around your foot and stretch. And this can be a dressing gown tie, it could be a, a, a you know a normal belt. Yoga belts are not that expensive anymore; you can buy them quite easily now. Um, and by the way, props were invented by B. K. S. Ayenga. So all the props that we have now that we kind of take for granted, they originated from his, his ideas. Um, much the same as uh, Joseph Pilates, um, who was, that's his name, Joseph Pilates. He invented a lot of things which are now used in, in other systems as well. So these two kind of geniuses of, of their time have given us a really wonderful legacy to help everybody um, to heal. So I've got my, my right leg extended. You could have both legs extended. And then you could practice maybe bringing this leg up a bit higher, like so, if you can't stand or balance. So a couple of different uh, alternatives there. And then the third one for the knees that I'm going to show you. Um, now this is very different and some of you will think, oh my God, I'm not going to do that. Um, it involves actually bending the knees. So I'll show you the pose as it is. I'm going to move back a bit because my... <clears throat> My camera seems to have shrunk me. Let's see. That's a bit better because I'm going to come down to the floor and I want you to be able to see me a bit better. So this is what the pose could look like. So you basically sit between your heels. Okay, so don't do this obviously if, you're, if you've got serious knee problems and you can't get down to the floor. Just watch for a second. So it's, a, it's, it's the most um, extreme... Uh, flexion that you can make of the knee okay so the knee is that that hinge joint it has got a tiny bit of rotation but it's mainly that a hinge joint so this is as far back as it will is it able to go if the buttocks are on the floor and the shin bones are on the floor now although this looks extreme um, for people that have um, knee ligament problems and uh, are able to kneel, this is in, a really uh, intense massage for that joint, and it and it squeezes the synovial joint, uh, mus uh, sorry, the synovial fluid through the joint. And when you come out of the pose, you come out quite quickly. It flushes everything through the leg. It's even good for the lower abdominals because the, the the venous blood flow gets stimulated, it's brilliant for varicose veins, it's brilliant for ankle problems, healing after injury, etc., etc. So there's various things that we can do to get towards that pose. Firstly, if you can get down to the floor, you can start with your buttocks on a lift. The lift goes between your feet and you can have as much height as you need so that if you are struggling, you see now the gap, there's a gap there, so the, the, the angle isn't so, so um, extreme, so there's more opening in the back of the knee. So you can still do the same pose, but with more space behind the knee like that, and obviously you'd need something for your hands. So that's if you can get down to the floor. There's other things you can do as well. Some people have, um, simply a little bit of tension behind the back of the knee. So 
you take a belt and you bring that behind the knee. And I'll show this from the front. This is a very common adjustment that we give to people with that slight niggle. And you put the belt right in the back of the knee and you pull the belt forwards. M most, of, most of the time it's this inner knee ligament and you pull that forwards as they sit down and it immediately takes the pain away in that ligament because it's got core, it's short, it's trapped and you pull that forwards and it lengthens this inner, um, inner thigh area to help take that pain away. And then the other common um, problem that people have when they go to the kneeling position is the ankles where there's that big gap between the top of the ankle and the floor and it's really painful. So you make a roll like so and you put the feet over that roll, the ankles are on top and then you, you put your props on top of that and then you sit down. So then that, that um, ankle joint is supported and it's really nice and you can see people when they've been really struggling, um, a lot of the time this is men this happens to because they're very muscular here. Um, but women get it as well. And you can see their faces going, oh, thank God, because it really does take that pain away. So that's for the people that can get down to the floor, that can move around a little bit more. How about those people that really know, there's no way I'm gonna get down to the floor. My knee is fused. I've got this, this and that problem. Sometimes you have to stay with the straight leg poses, but you can, using a chair, something you can tuck your feet underneath, make that same shape even at this height. So what you do is you take yourself onto the edge of your chair and you walk your foot back and you see if you can point your toes back like that. So can you see now I'm sitting up, I don't have to get down to the floor, I've got almost a right angle bend here but I'm still making that shape and then you work towards bringing the foot further back. Okay, you're watching that you're not pushing your lumbar forwards. And then sometimes we get people to put their foot just so that they can increase the gap, uh, sorry, decrease the gap. We say, right, we're gonna try that again and let's put your foot on a, on a block. So then we're starting to close. I had a cyclist once who was so, um, he was a professional cyclist, but he was so tight in his legs that he had to do virus, uh, that kneeling pose like this all the time. He couldn't, he couldn't go to the floor at all. So we had him in a chair like that. And then you can put both legs back or just, just do one at a time. Um, so there's a few alternatives there. And the kneeling is important, that flexion of the knee is important because if you're always just stretching the leg out all the time, you haven't got the full range of movement. However, if you are um, at the stage where the knee is, is damaged and um, you know, it really can't bend because of some fusion or something like that, then just focus on the straight leg work. Finally, um, this one, just letting that knee come in like that, holding around the back of the knee. So whenever you do bent leg work, hold around the back of the knee if there's pain. If it's not painful, you can hold here. That's giving you that same squeezing action around the knee. And uh, in addition, it's giving you a nice stretch on the hip, which connects to one of the poses we're gonna do later. So you can do something like that. You can also do that lying down on your back and just bringing that knee towards your chest, whilst the other leg either is straight along the floor or uh, leg bent, foot flat on the floor. Okay, so that's a little tiny snapshot on some of the things that we can do for the knees. Um, it's a, it's, there are many, 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 many more variations of poses um, depending on people's individual circumstances, but that's a, a few insights for you on the knees. Now, moving on to the lower back. So I mentioned this one here. Um, this one, um, is really helpful for the lower back. So um, if it's a general lower back pain and it's not sacroiliac, it's not a herniated disc, then usually um, releasing, stretching out that, that area is, is your first port, port of call when you've got a stiff back, painful back. Um, herniated discs are treated slightly differently. Um, so I'm not gonna focus on those. I'm just gonna focus on general lower back pain in two or three poses. And I'm going to show you that pose lying down. So, of course, if you are able to lie down on a sofa or, 
or a bed but not on the floor you can do exactly what I'm showing here so <clears throat> whenever you've got lower back pain and you go to lie down use the hands beside your hips and roll your spine down roll your spine down so you're very very soft don't crunch your abdomen let the body release down to the floor and keep the legs bent and all your movements should be considered um, not jerky because then the back will just cramp up and then feel the weight of your abdomen moving down towards the lower back I don't want you to push your spine into the floor because that's a different action but just to feel that you're not arching overarching the lumbar and then you take one leg at a time and of course if you've got a lower back and bad knees you hold around the back of your knee um, so this is where you can connect certain conditions together and then you just bring that knee and you don't pull it in too much you just let the leg the weight of the leg add to the weight on the abdomen and so that's giving that right side of the lower back some traction some release if you were able to you could stretch this other leg away and even if you're lying down on the sofa lying down on the bed or even if you have to sit in the chair and just lean back in your chair you can still stretch this leg out straight if it's possible otherwise you just keep that leg bent and then you change legs and this is a very simple again either front or back of the knee very simple medicine first aid for lower backs and the other variation is to hold both legs towards you like that so hands around the back of the knees or around the fronts of the knees and again no, you're not doing this you're not jumping or bouncing around you're just trying to feel the weight of the legs onto the body you can even hold around the shin bones a little lower down it gives you more um, feeling of uh, spreading in the lower back um, when you come up and out of this pose again you don't want to lift up because then the back will contract you turn to your side and usually we turn to the right side and you use your left hand to help you come up from the floor okay um, if there's problems coming up from the floor but you you're used to you know where you have to be for example my mum when she does come up from the floor we try and get we try and get back to a chair or something that she can press her hands into or what she has done before she turns over and she puts her hands down and she comes onto her knees like that and then she is able to then lift the knees and walk and she's nine, nearly 91 but she's still able to do this which is which is fantastic so you you know there are ways to get up and down from the floor i'm not going to cover that here but um if anyone's interested in learning um, techniques for getting up and down to the floor then uh, let me know so that's that would be the first thing now um, the thing about the lower back is is often and in many of these um, conditions that I'm, I'm talking about today there's postural pro postural um, techniques or postural problems let's say or misalignments that can either that, that can that can um, lead to a bad back or lead to a certain problems so having soothed that area you can then go to towards trying to realign that area and see you know is it because I tend to always push like this or is it because I'm leaning on one side is it because I went, I did lots of gardening yesterday and there was too much of this bending down and I wasn't bending my knees or you know whatever pro whatever the problem is or maybe you sit for a long period of time so if you think about your posture in terms of the levelness of your pelvis then the alignment of the spinal column and the alignment of the the head with the tailbone with the heels it can really help to release this area of the lower back and then give you more understanding of how to carry on through life without precipitating those conditions so one of the things that we do with our lower back people uh, all our students actually is look at the way they stand just much the same as with the knees so you could again look at that parallel action of the feet and the big toes moving to the outer to uh, moving to the little toes center of the heel bone pressing down 
but then add to that whether you tend to drop at the front of the pelvis and this is going to have a relation to the next next subject that i'm talking about you slightly bend the knees and then you tuck the tailbone forwards forwards not we're not trying to push the tailbone down and do this we're trying to tuck the tailbone forward so if you look at my my hand here that's my tailbone hand this is my pubic bone hand or my front hip bones or you know the top of my pelvic rim and this hand is trying to lift up and this hand is going slightly down but mostly forwards like that and if you do that a few times you just bend the knees move the tailbone forwards lift the pubic bone up you'll find that the space will come here and it will feel quite nice for those that have got that that aching sensation because you're lengthening the muscles there and then you can practice you know stretching the arms up perhaps if you haven't got any shoulder problems to get the get the weight off the lower back you can do that sitting in a chair same way so you watch to see which part of the pelvic floor am i sitting on and can i just tuck the front hip bones back a little bit try and lift the front hip bones up so you're literally pulling your pants up at the front all of these actions to create space here in the lower back um, and then one of the other poses which i've taught many times and i think we've done it in these sessions together is to have the hands on a ledge or a wall probably in line with your chest not much lower than that and then to walk back with those feet parallel and push the hips back. And here again, we want to watch that we don't, if you look at my crease, the creases on my t-shirt now as I'm dropping my lumbar down, but actually we keep the creases on the t-shirt ironed out by lifting the front hip bones, or if it makes it easier to imagine, lifting the navel towards the spine. Of course here it's, more, it's a stronger action because you've got the arms involved and the shoulders and the legs are straight. But for those that can manage just a few seconds of this, you'll find that it creates that nice length, nice space in the lower back. Um, and one thing to watch for when you come out of that, in fact, I just showed that coming out the wrong way, which is very naughty of me. Um, going in, you go right up to the wall and you step back like that. Again, lifting the navel, pushing the buttocks back. Coming out, walk forwards, and come up particularly for those with that have the lower back problem at the time just go in carefully and come out carefully so that you're, again you're not jarring the body so um half forward bend and then i've written it down here we go um we've already done the legs going to the the chest there's one final one i can't read my writing yes okay <laughs> There you go. <laughs> this is recorded, but I'm doing it live, if you know what I mean. Um, seated forward, uh, seated twist. Oh, by the way, if you can't stand up, but you still want to stretch out the back, you just, you just sit in your chair and you go forwards like that. You see, and I'm still getting that nice extension through the spine, but watch that you don't drop that lumbar again. So keep the belly close to the spine, buttocks moving down at the back. Okay, now if we're doing a chair twist, seated twist, this can be done in several different ways. Um, you sit with the legs nice and wide like this, and you just turn over your front leg. So you turn to one side. The other hand, it depends on the type of chair you've got. If you're on a stool, you can just take that hand directly behind you. If you're on a chair with a high back, you'll just put your hand against the side of the chair like that. So you've got something to push into. You come back to the center, you do the same on the other side and keep those feet planted firmly down. Remember to connect all of the things that we're doing. So the big toe joint, little toe joint, center of the heel bone pressing down. Then everything's still in alignment even though you're sitting in a chair. Rather than having one leg in and you're just twisting, nothing's going to twist effectively you're, you're twisting but then nothing's happening so feet nice and wide feet aligned maybe with your chair legs toes pointing straight forward so that when you twist you really feel the twist is in the going to the place that it's needed to and then you'd come back and you can do that a few times other twists that you can do might be if you can stand up 
you can have the wall behind you for something to rest on but you can take your leg up and twist and this is really good because it lifts the lower back up and you turn over your your uh, bent leg you take the opposite hand across and the right and the other hand comes behind you and if you wanted the wall for balance you take your the, the leg that's um, nearest to the wall up and then you can turn like that and have the wall for balance and that's really nice for the lower back again you get that nice tall lift and turn the twists are um, massaging that area they're you know mobilizing that area where it gets tight and stiff and painful so that's lower backs in a nutshell but again there's a lot more that I can show you um, but this is just to give you a taster the next subject is quite a difficult one it's prolapse so um, any kind of prolapse of the of the pelvic floor and of course it, it gets more common as you get older it can happen at any age um, and the, the, the general guidance is, you know, strengthen everything, strengthen everything. But actually you have to be, it's helpful if you really study anatomy um, of that pelvic area, if you have that problem. And the first thing again is this alignment of the feet, of the pelvic rim, to make sure that we're not pushing down into that area and straining. And obviously sometimes it can happen from um, having um, operations, hysterectomies, childbirth, etc. Um, but it can also happen um, due to postural problems, um, illness, etc. So one of the first things you can do to, to, to help um, to support that area is to look at your posture. So coming back to this Tadasana action, Tadasana means mountain pose, um, looking to see that you're not pushing down at the at the front and lifting at the back um, moving that area of the tailbone coccyx forwards and then feeling the lift of your um, pelvic floor at the front up so you divide between the front and the back so the back of the pelvic floor where the anal mouth is perineum that area is moving in and the front and the, and the perineum generally lifts up, but you should keep it quite relaxed. But the front of the pelvic floor um, is lifting up, and that's the area that needs to be drawn up. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to squeeze all the time, because if you squeeze your buttocks, you're pushing the front of the pelvic floor forwards, which can have a detrimental effect. So you need to see that the alignment is there, so that you can just support the area that needs to be supported. Now, I'm not assuming that you've got, everybody's got yoga props yet. You might get passionate enough about this subject to, to start learning and then learn about how to use the props. But one of the props that I use for, for um, my people that have um, any issues there, and it's also to teach anybody, and this is also related to the hip work, um, to train because we have the supporting cast in this area which is the um, these um, hip flexors and the adductor muscles and, and everything else um, is to put a brick between your thighs and squeeze it and it's a very difficult thing to, to say and I've got to show you my buttocks I'm sorry about this but when you squeeze the brick you have to watch you don't squeeze your buttocks. I don't know if you can see that. If I, if I show the brick at the front, okay, watch the difference. This is me squeezing the buttocks. Can you see the brick goes forwards like that? But this is me just squeezing the adductors and you can't see anything. But I'm squeezing that brick so hard that I can feel the inner thighs really pressing against it. And I can feel the lift in the front of the pelvis. So to use this prop efficiently, effectively, you have to know not to squeeze the buttocks and push everything forwards because that again pushes down into that area but used correctly it really helps this whole front of the of the um, um, pelvic floor region to lift lift up and, and support itself so that's something you can think about um, and then the other thing that affects that area is the um, rotation of the hips and this is tricky because obviously we've got people with hip problems um, so you have to just, you know, be mindful of that. Um, 
if you're using these this next exercise that if you've got a um, hip dysplasia or you've got had a recent hip surgery this might not be appropriate for you to do so just you know you, you know what your limitations are I'm sure um, but anything where you're turning you're externally rotating the thigh muscle the femur bone the femur head that also has a, a good effect on the pelvic floor um, in things like uh, a common standing pose, for example, is triangle pose, triangle pose. So the, the leg is externally rotated and then you extend over to, to, the, um, to the leg. Um, those that know the yoga poses know this triangle pose and that external rotation is really important because it, it lifts this area of the pelvis up. However, if you're not used to those poses or you can't stand and you need your chair, you can externally rotate by bringing the, the soles of the feet together and the knees out to the side like that. And then you can practice turning your thighs like this, externally rotating, having your hands behind you, and then feeling that lift of the pelvic floor at the front, keeping the buttocks relaxed, which is surprisingly difficult so you, you really have to concentrate, but this external rotation will grip the outer hips, keep this area nice and soft, but also um, from, from uh, just in front of the perineum, it lifts everything up. Okay, so um, get your anatomy books out and look at the pelvic foot. It's absolutely fascinating. <laughs> it's like a whole other subject. Um, and obviously lifting the body up away from that downward pressure you know, so watching how you sit and how much pressure you put on on the uh, the, the bottom organs, the uh, organs at the base of the spine, at the, in the lower body, things like that. Now, obviously, this pose you can do sitting down as uh, sitting on the floor as well. And then the other pose that I want to show, this one, has a similar effect because you're getting that external rotation, and you're also helping that pelvic floor to lift at the front. Um, tailbone is engaged forwards and you can sit up nice and tall like that. So those poses done on the floor um, <clears throat> sometimes we need a little bit of support so you might have a cushion or a blanket or something you can sit on. What you want to see <laughs> there's my cat, is that when you take your your feet together that your knees are more or less in line with your hips or even on the floor. I know, you know, my colleagues and some people can sit very easily. Excuse me, I'm, I'm in the middle of a very important video here. Um, the, um, my knees don't go down to the floor. I've got very tight groins. Even after all these years of practice, this is one of my poses. Um, so, but I want to make sure that I'm at least attempting to get the knees, you know, in line with the hips. If they're up here around your ears, then it's better to sit higher up because then if the knees are up high, it, it will create more pressure down into here. So again, use the poses, use the props to help you achieve the desired results rather than just following a, a, you know, a sequence and arbitrarily make sure that it actually, you know, it's like taking the right dosage of medicine um, and that way you will benefit. And then of course you can take the legs out this way. But as I said, these can also be done on the chair very, very easily. Okay, so that's the pelvic floor touched on, touched on, but there's, there's much more detail about that. And if anyone wants some resources, I can send them to you because we have got a very um, extensive um, uh, library of resources on, on that area. And there's one particular teacher that if you're, if you're very interested, I can send you, um, details about her. She's an American Iyengar yoga teacher specializing in the pelvic floor. So finally we we were looking at we're going to look at hips and how to alleviate those problems that we some of the problems in the hips and usually it's to do with the, the um, uh, one or two things hypermobility or stiffness. Now there's a lot of workshops that will tell you, oh, you know, go to this hip opener workshop, this, that, this and that hip opener workshop. Actually, hips need more stability. And it's, it's usually this area that's the tighter area. So things like this pose, for example, will grip the hips, give the hip socket stability, but lengthen this area. 
So in, in terms of, of that, it, you want to look for poses really that, that have that balance or look for exercises that have that balance. So um, I'm going to show you now um, that standing pose, triangle pose. Those people that have hip dysplasia, like my mother, for example, they can't turn that leg, they can't rotate because there's, there's no cup left, so they, you know, they have to be very, very careful. Um, with those, those kinds of conditions, what you want to do is keep your feet facing forwards and just work on um, uh, combining that feeling of gripping the brick between the inner thighs, lifting the, the front of the pelvic floor up, and pressing the three corners of the feet down, big toe, little toe, center of the heel bone down. Those three actions will create immense strength in your hips. And you can, you know, do all kinds of arm movements and, you know, you can um, move forwards like this. All right, but if you are able to externally rotate, you turn that leg and you try to see that the inner and outer knee is facing directly forwards, the foot is facing directly forwards, and it's in line with the left arch because that all affects the um, alignment of your pelvis. You watch to see you're not dipping at the front there. And although this hip is slightly behind this hip now, uh, you want to see that it's level vertically. So the two front hip bones are level vertically. And then you extend the right arm out and you come to the side. So here, you can go to a wall, you can put your hand on the chair, the top of the chair, you can put your hand on the chair seat, you can take your hand down, you can go to the floor. So there's all different levels. What you wanna watch for, and I'll show this from the side. So you see this hip at the moment is in, and I'm thinking, oh yeah, I can go down and touch the floor. And now look, this is all back. My arm is forwards. I think I'm doing a nice stretch, but actually I'm overstretching here. I'm pushing this hip joint out and I'm understretching. My, gro my groin is now so tight because it's trying to protect that pelvic floor. So wherever you go, you've got to try and keep that buttock in. And that might mean putting your hand on a chair or even on a table. Um, if you can't stand, there's two ways you can use your chair. First way is to sit with your legs wide. You sit on the front edge of the chair and then you can just practice turning that leg out. So you're slightly, I would say you're slightly sort of sitting forwards. Uh, with the chest, slightly back with the buttocks, but you can still practice those movements. You can bend down, holding the chair like, leg like that. I'm sitting on the chair, there's no weight on my legs, but I'm still working my feet as much as I can. I can't quite straighten this leg because the chair is in the way, because I've got my thigh on the chair. So you can do it that way. You can sit on the corner of the chair. Let's go the other way. Can sit across the corner of the chair and do it that way but you want to see that your feet are in line the legs are slanted forwards again that's for those that really need stability with the chair the first one is the most stable second one is a little bit more difficult if you're in a wheelchair you can you know see if you can take the legs out at all or you can keep the legs um, where they are or, or practice having the legs extended out and just focus on trying to rotate, externally rotate, externally rotate the legs one at a time and practice that kind of action. If you're a little bit more mobile but you need stability, you can go this way and this is a little bit more difficult. You take one leg across the chair and you sit that way. <laughs> And it's a lot more difficult because this leg will be up on a block or on the wall like that. So you've really got to stretch the thighs. Looks a bit like I'm doing flying splits here, but you can hold on to the chair that way. But it's for those that have a bit more openness, but maybe for some reason you, you, can't, you can't stand at the moment, but you've still got that opening. For bent leg um, poses like warrior two 
or this one where we bend the leg and go down. This is also nice because you can, you can put the foot flat on the floor like that. But that's really for those that can manage to get across the seat of their chair. It's a bit more difficult than the, the first two. So triangle pose. Also triangle pose. Let's go to the other side. It's great for the pelvic floor if you're aware. So I'm holding on to the right, left side of my um, um, groin there and I'm pulling it up just to show you that as you go down, you're lifting the groin up. It helps that pelvic floor to lift because I'm not pushing down like that. So we've got to keep everything lifting up, turning away from that leg. And also the lower back because you're stretching out that side of the back as you go down, especially if you keep the arm up high so that you can feel the stretch on that side of the body, stretch on the front of the body. Um, so in that way, your triangle pose is helping all of those different conditions, even the knees because it's strengthening from the ground up. Um, and one last thing, uh, leg stretches. Let me just show this. I'll tell you what, I'll pretend this is the sofa, this bench here to show you how to do leg stretches lying down. So if you can't lie down on the floor, but you can get on your sofa, I hope this is long enough. It's not quite long enough, but pretend it's a sofa. Um, let's put that chair there for my head. Oops, what's happening? Okay. So, just to pretend I'm lying down on my sofa here. Um, and you can keep the legs bent. And then you get your belt or you hold around the back of the knee. And then this time we externally rotate again and we take the leg out to the side. The leg can be bent or the leg can be straight. But the golden rule is that you don't have your leg lower than your hip. If it is, you and you can't, you can't stretch it any more than that. You bend the leg so that the leg bone, the thigh bone is higher than your hip. Otherwise it just pulls on the back. But this one, again, the external rotation and it um, stretches that inner groin and grips the outer hip. If you can manage, you can keep the other leg straight and bring that leg out to the side and obviously do both sides. And of course, those that can manage to um, do that from the floor, you can do that one from the floor. There's many, many different ways to help people and the passion that I have about Iyengar Yoga is because of working with BKS Iyengar, working with his um, daughter Gita Iyengar and the Iyengar family. Uh, my training over the last 30 years, I've seen um, so many people benefit from this practice. It is something that you have to work at. It's not a quick fix. It's not like popping a pill, but you, it, if you have consistency in your practice and you go to somebody who can guide you properly, um, it does have um, far reaching benefits that can really transform your life. And yoga can then become a friend, an aid, a therapy, to help you navigate through uh, many of life's um, difficult times, both physically and mentally and, and otherwise. Um, we train as Iyengar teachers for six years um, before we get our certificate. And then we have ongoing personal professional, sorry, professional development every year. We have to train for, for 30 hours every year. So if you're interested to try to um, have a, a class with a, a Iyengar teacher, I can certainly help you find somebody in your local area um, or just uh, Google Iyengar Yoga UK and you'll come up with their website and they have full listings there. And I really hope that this video has uh, given you a little bit more insight into um, our system and the way it works for people. And um, let me know your questions if you have any and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you very much. Bye for now.
So I'm here with my mum, Jean. <laughs> uh, so we're going to show you those poses that I mentioned for the adaptations for people that can't weight bear. She's a really good demonstrator and she's got um, a weight bearing problem in her right hip. So I'm just going to show how to modify those poses that we did earlier in this video. So she's got her right foot up on a very thin block that could be a folded mat or something like that because her right leg is slightly shorter than her left leg. There's a chair beside her to put one hand on and then because she's got her support here she can let go of the crutch on this side and put her hand against the wall there. Um, just bring that hand down a little bit mum, that's it, like that. And then she can work on keeping the, the feet aligned um, like we did at the beginning, big toe joint to little toe joint, uh, outer, uh, sorry, back of the heel pressing down those three points on the foot to create that stability and that lift up through the legs and lifting the whole spine up, shoulders down, shoulders back. So that's our first pose done for people that can't weight bear. Um, if you can't weight bear at all, I'll show you what's going to happen next. Okay, so we've now got mum in, oh, sorry, Jean, <laughs> in a chair um, and as I said before you can do that same alignment of the feet using the chair. Uh, we're going to place her right foot up on that very very thin block so that this so that her knees are level and she can really work now on aligning her feet spreading from the big toe to the little toe. We could even put another block between the feet so I'm just going to widen the feet a little bit mum. That's it, like that. And then she can squeeze that block with, with her feet uh, so that she can feel that the heel bone and the big toe are perfectly aligned. So see if you can move that foot across a little bit to touch the other block. That's it, yes, like that. And oh, you're squeezing yeah. that block and then lifting up again through the spine, hands beside the hips maybe, or hands stretching down uh, by your sides, shoulders nicely rolling back. All right, so that's how you can do that first pose sitting down and we'll move on to the next one swiftly. So this is the chair version of that standing pose with the leg extended with a belt around the foot. And this can be done from the chair with the um, bottom leg, so this is the right leg in this case, either extending into a wall or it can be done with the leg completely bent, the foot flat on the floor. The raised leg is extending onto a, a, a ledge here. It's a, a little bench thing. Um, it could be a footstool or another chair uh, or even just to the, to the floor as long as that leg is extending. And the belt is there to create that resistance so she can um, roll her shoulders back, she can lift her chest and feel really nice and upright. I've got a cushion behind her here so that she's not slouching back into the chair and she's sitting upright from her buttock bones and how's that for you mum? Yes it feels fine. Yeah outside, yes. good and also we're looking forwards towards the wall rather than looking down towards the foot so that the, 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 the back of the head is in line with the rest of the spine. All right so this is the chair version of the kneeling pose that I demonstrated before so just to show that it is possible to do it. <laughs> um, and actually this works really well on both mum's legs, even the one that, that she can't weight bear on. She's getting a nice stretch through the fronts of the thighs and she can work on trying to walk the feet further back. And, in, and funnily enough, it's her uh, stronger leg, the one she can weight bear on, that she, that she feels more tight on in this because it's got, got more muscular um, action. And she just works on trying to walk the feet further back to get the knees further down. But apart from that, she can just hold onto the chair and practice sitting herself upright as well. Maybe even l coming back a little bit with the body and that will increase the stretch. Can you feel that, Mum? Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> that, in that increases the stretch on the thighs and on the front groin. So you go incrementally back further um, to your limit. So that looks great, Mum. All right, well done. We'll move on to the next one. Okay, so I've got Mum over to a tall stool. Um, you could use a kitchen surface, something that nor has a, a height that's level with your hips, more or less. You could even put your hands at the wall. So again, she can't wait bare for long, so this is a, a good way for her to stand. She's got her funny little um, 
tiny, tiny block underneath her right foot again to lift that leg up. And she's going to practice that alignment that we did in the pelvis where we were bending the knees, lifting the pubic bone up, front hip bones up, and then trying to straighten the legs without letting the bottom go back. If you, um, if you just stand up normally, mum, that's it, I'm just going to alter your clothing there. Um, when she stands up normally, there's a very slight tilt forwards, very slight, it's not too bad actually. Um, but when she bends her legs, so if you bend your legs now, she can then access the front of the pelvis to lift and then very slowly straighten the legs with trying to keep the front of the pelvis uh, lifting up, trying not to revert back to that tipping. And you can feel it, can't you, Mum, behind? Yes. Yeah, you can feel the psoas engaging, the lift in the front of the pelvis. And it's quite muscular, isn't it? It is, Yeah, yes. yeah. And uh, I can see the concentration in her face. <laughs> okay, so that's how you could practice your pelvic work just using the, the the stool but have something where the hands can rest it level with your hips so that you're not leaning forwards to get the hands down all right so we're now moving on to the forward bend and the half forward bend for lower backs um, originally we had going halfway to the wall from standing and I mentioned that you can do this from the chair going forwards to the wall if you've got um, a table in front of you, you can sit on a chair and go forwards to the table. So mum's going to show that now. She's got her feet on the floor. She's going to stretch her arms forwards. And you can always bring the chair a bit close, you know, the table a bit closer or go a bit closer to the table and rest the head. But here she's getting this lovely stretch in her lower back. She's also getting a stretch in the outer hips. Um, front thighs are also getting a nice contraction. Hamstrings are relaxed and the shoulders are extended as well. So that's how to do your forward bend from your chair so that you don't have to stand up. You can do it seated. And even if you uh, can weight bear, this is a lovely stretch to do. Um, so have a go, have a practice yourself and find the difference between the standing forward bend and this seated forward bend, especially for your lower back. Okay, so the next one is the chair version of this seated pose, the, the seated pose where we'd normally sit on the floor for this one. And I said you could do this one in the chair as well. And you can even do a variation of a standing pose with this. However, for my mother's condition where she can't um, rotate that thigh externally, I've just got her extending the legs out straight with the toes more or less pointing towards the ceiling, but very focusing very much on pushing those heels away to create muscles, muscle tone up through the fronts of the legs. Because you were saying it was difficult to get that tone if you can't yes. weight bear on that leg. So this is a way to do it and you can even push push the feet into the wall to do it as well. Um, and then you, you can point and flex your toes as well to exercise both the front and the back of the lower leg and you'll feel that it's like a lever when you pull the toes up towards you, you can feel the femur bone going up into the hip. When you point the toes away you can feel that extension of the quadricep and relaxation of the um, hamstring. Okay, always make sure that you're not sliding off your chair. So I've actually got mum on a sticky mat on the chair here. And the other thing we can do is lifting the spine up. So making sure you're really tall in your chest, you can twist, you can take your right hand over to the left thigh. You can take the uh, left arm behind you and you can turn and look over your right shoulder. And then you can come back to the front and go the other way. That's it. Keeping that spine lifting up in the center looking around over your shoulder, making sure that you're breathing and then coming back to the center as well. And then you can bend the knees. Can you bend the knees, mum? Put the feet flat. That's it. Sometimes you have to help the back of the knee there and just gently, gently push the knees out. That's it. Again, sitting up nice and tall. The other version I mentioned was this version where the soles of the feet come together. Um, for my mother, that's a little bit too strong. So this version where you keep the feet on the floor and just push out, gives that pelvic floor lift, grip of the hips, but without any um, danger or aggravation to the hip socket. Okay, so that's that variation. And we're gonna come on to the final couple of poses now. Okay, so finally, we've got this 
lovely pose. In fact, there's two poses here and I've constructed a sofa or a bed. So this represents a sofa or a bed where you can't get down to the floor um, and you need to have a raised height to do this. So what mum's gonna do first, what Jean's gonna do first, is she's gonna bend her leg towards her chest and, and draw the knee towards your chest. So if you bend that left leg now, she, and she's holding around the front of the knee, she doesn't have any knee problems. If she did, she'd hold around the back of the knee, hold around the back of the knee. No, 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 not yet. You can hold around the back of the knee. Yeah, like that, just to show that's what you do when you've got a knee problem right. and you don't want that um, pressure on the knee joint. So she's just pulling that knee towards her and this leg is extended away. And then what she can do, she can take her belt around the foot. Can you manage that or do you want some help? She's there. And she can stretch that leg up. Look at that. So she's getting all of that extension as, as everybody else would be, um, whether they were down on the floor or lying down on a bed or a sofa or a load of yoga props put together to make a sofa okay so release that leg now mum let's take that belt off stretch that leg away and there we are some really good alternatives for some difficult poses for people that have those mobility problems beautifully demonstrated by my mother here oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you very much everyone see you again soon Right.